this lesson we're going to talk about how to design algorithms, which is one of the most important skills you can learn in becoming an effective computer programmer. So we're going to talk about uh, just the basic idea behind what an algorithm is, and especially what makes a good algorithm. Uh, and then we will talk about a useful way of creating algorithms called stepwise design. So. Let's talk about what an algorithm is. You all know what an algorithm is, even if maybe you haven't heard the term defined. Your book says that an algorithm is a sequence of steps that is unambiguous, executable, and terminating. But the easiest way to just think about an algorithm is it's a set of instructions. And in our case, it'll be a set of instructions for the computer. But if you think of, you know, other cases where you need a sequence of steps to tell you what to do, you could think of um, instructions for how to put something together or even a recipe for how to make um, some sort of dish or even athletic plays if you need to tell the people on your team what steps to do to be in a certain place to execute a certain play that's an algorithm so here's an example of a very simple algorithm that you all have hopefully uh, been able to accomplish and will be able to accomplish tomorrow which is how to get to class. And again, one of the things that you'll notice is that you can write an algorithm at a lot of different levels of specificity, uh, levels of detail, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, every algorithm needs to uh, be a complete set of instructions from beginning to end, no matter how detailed it is. So if we look at this uh, algorithm, it's a pretty high level algorithm, it has just four steps, and they are all pretty uh, basic pretty um, they are not very specific so we'll get into a little bit more of that now as far as what makes a good algorithm at least as far as we're concerned it should be written at an appropriate level of detail it, the algorithm it depends on whether you're writing a algorithm for people to just go over and discuss or whether you need to write an algorithm at a level that the computer can execute, which needs to be very, very specific. Um, it should be both effective and efficient. So just to clarify the difference between those two, an effective algorithm is one that is um, reliable, uh, that will work every time. An efficient algorithm is an algorithm that works as quickly as possible. Those two things are not necessarily exclusive. You can have an algorithm that works all the time but it's very slow you can have a very fast algorithm that doesn't work but you really need to have both of those if you're going to have an algorithm that is a good algorithm and it should be easy to modify you should be able to take a set of instructions and change it in order to meet a slightly different set of circumstances so how do we what are some um, techniques that we use to create algorithms for our programs. Well, the first thing you need to do is to determine uh, what we're going to call level zero in our stepwise design, which is the before and after conditions. What has to be true before the algorithm runs, and then what has to be true when the algorithm has finished running. Now, if you can't define the problem that you're trying to solve, then it's going to be hard to come up with a solution. Then what we're going to need to do is to take that problem and break it down into smaller tasks. And that's what we're going to do in a minute with stepwise design. You want to try to write each task in what we call pseudocode, which is language which uh, summarizes what the computer will do without it actually having to be the syntax of Java or whatever language you're doing. So you can still read it like English, but it is written um, in the the system of actions that the computer can execute. And then the last thing when you finish your algorithm is you need to test it. Um, you really should test an algorithm on paper or in your head before you sit down and start coding it just to make sure that you don't waste time coding an algorithm that doesn't work. Now as far as how we're going to come up with those sequence of steps, we're going to use a technique called stepwise design. Stepwise design is a top-down approach, which means that you begin at a high level with a very uh, simple set of steps, and then what you do is you keep taking each one of those steps and you keep breaking it down and breaking it down and breaking it down until 
you've written a set of instructions that are at the level that the computer can execute. And you're going to expand your solution slowly. As we go from each level to the next level, you're only going to want to take each step and break it down into maybe three to five new instructions. If you go, if you expand it too quickly, then you won't necessarily have a good sense of how your solution uh, is uh, developing. So let's take a look at an example of that. Uh, we'll take our example from the previous slide where we are going to class and we will start with that stepwise design. Now here are the four steps from that slide which I'm going to call level one. Um, every stepwise design should also begin with a level zero and that's where we put those two very important conditions for every algorithm, the beginning and end. So let's just say for begin that we are going to start uh, in our bed asleep. And our ending condition needs to be we are sitting uh, in our first period classroom appropriately dressed and having eaten breakfast. Make sure that you specify all those conditions. Uh, it would be very easy for us to come up with an algorithm where we wind up in class hungry and naked, but that doesn't really get us where we need to be. So here we are with level one. Um, again, this is going to be the most uh, high level and the simplest way of defining the whole solution. Uh, now is where we're going to start applying that stepwise design technique. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take everything from level one. Yeah, let's do this. We're going to take everything from level one, we're going to copy it, and then we're going to create call level two. And so I'm going to paste the entire level one there just so that I'm sure that I've um, got the complete solution still. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, some or all of those steps and I'm going to rewrite them in more detail. So let's take for example step, wake up. Step one. So I'm going to rewrite that. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to rewrite that as a couple of steps. And so in order to indicate that, I'm going to call the first um, subtask, if you want to call it, I'm going to call it step 1.1. And so we will say, open eyes, step 1.2 is going to be get out of bed. So one thing when you're creating your subsequent levels is it's always good to check that the subtasks that you've created still accomplish the bigger task that they are supposed to be part of. So let's just make sure that opening your eyes and getting out of bed, does that accomplish the task of waking up? Uh, yeah, I think it does. So I think we're okay. Now we're going to repeat the same process with um, the other steps that we have in our design. So as far as get dressed goes, I'm going to say the first thing we should do is take a shower. Then what we should do is put out clothes and put on clothes. Now let's just make sure, do these three steps here accomplish step two from level one? Yeah, I think they do, so I think we're all right. So let's repeat that process again. Uh, eating breakfast, we're going to choose our food. Um, bring food to the table. And again, with step four, step 4.1, we're going to, um, well, you know what? Let's go back to step three, and we'll add a step, um, clean up dirty dishes. Now for step four, we will pick up backpack, and we will walk to the classroom, and we will sit down in seat. Okay, so here we have level two. Let's just make sure, again, we are starting in the same place and we are ending up also in the same ending place. So step two, or level two, is still a complete algorithm solution. If we really wanted to, 
we could highlight everything from level two and create a level three. Maybe you don't need that level that much detail. Um, but uh, the other thing to remember with stepwise design is you don't have to expand every single step in your stepwise design. Maybe you get to a step like, you know, open eyes, it's not really uh, easy to expand that into more steps, nor is it really productive um, to expand that into more steps. But maybe, for example, you want to take a shower by washing your hair and uh, washing your body. So some steps need to be expanded in each level, some steps don't. How do you know when you're done? Well again, that kind of goes back to that point we were making about writing your design at the appropriate level of specificity. Um, I would say you're done when you can look at your algorithm and be able to understand how to translate that into um, a Java program. So since we haven't really learned a lot of Java syntax yet, I'm not going to get into that, but you will see uh, as we continue to learn more Java code how to write a stepwise design um, at the appropriate level of pseudocode that you can then easily translate into Java code. So that's our overview of how to uh, design algorithms, including what makes a good algorithm, and then how to create an algorithm using stepwise design.